There's a lot of questions I want to ask you about the nature of resistance and what is the proper way to resist. What is the practical, pragmatic, effective ways of resisting? So one example that is often brought up is the difference between MLK and Malcolm X. One emphasized nonviolent resistance, the other emphasized any means necessary resistance. Um, which do you side with in general and in this particular case of what has happened over the past 100 plus days? So in general, that framing relies on a sanitization of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and a vilification of Malcolm X that a lot of people do put forth and present as two polar opposites in how they approach um, the plight of black people in America and, and resisting uh, racism here in America. Uh, when I taught a course at, at Southern Methodist University on MLK and Malcolm X and Islam and the Civil Rights Movement, what I'd often do is I'd give my students a set of quotes and I would say, assign this to Malcolm or Martin, and they'd always get it wrong. Right? <laughs> so you can find uh, you know, quotes from MLK and breaking the silence, and especially when he took a stand against the Vietnam War, uh, that sounds so radical you know, when you compare them to the, the image of MLK. And Malcolm is, of course, turned into this militant, angry uh, Muslim uh, who just wanted violence and was uh, seeking uh, chaos here in the United States. So let's be clear about something here, that Malcolm never himself was part of any violence. Malcolm never did anything violent. Malcolm found it hypocritical to commit the oppressed people to nonviolence while not restraining the oppressor from its violence. And I agree with Malcolm. It is absolutely hypocritical to focus your attention and your energy on the oppressed people and committing them to nonviolence while not directing your attention to the oppressor. When you have such asymmetry, when you have a clear aggressor and aggressed upon, you have a clear colonial entity and a clear colonized people you focus your energy on restraining the colonial power. You focus your energy on restraining the oppressor, not the oppressed. And so that was Malcolm's point, and it's clear in his messaging uh, throughout his religious growth, because of course Malcolm did evolve uh, as a person, but Malcolm found it deeply hypocritical to commit the oppressed to nonviolence. Malcolm also had a deep understanding of the way that brutality here State violence in the United States was connected to its state violence abroad and American imperialism as a whole. Malcolm was the first to speak on Vietnam, the first major African American leader to speak on Vietnam. Martin followed. Malcolm also went to Gaza in 1964. 1964, went to Khan Yunus, which is now under heavy bombardment, and Malcolm penned an essay on Zionism and connected Zionism to American imperialism and the broader implications of America's foreign policy. So Martin and Malcolm, if you look at them in the capacity of what's happening right now, where I would say you can find something that is deeply profound. James Cone wrote a book uh, called Malcolm and Martin, Dreams and Nightmares. And he wrote something profound to the effect that Martin tried to liberate white people from their own racism, whereas Malcolm tried to liberate black people from the effects of that racism on them. And so they both played a deeply important role. Self-determination is crucial to maintain the fuel of a movement. And I think one of the things that probably deeply frustrates those that have sought the erasure of Palestine is that Palestinian consciousness has only continued to grow after 75 years. Palestinians in diaspora and Palestinians within occupied territory all are deeply rooted in their Palestinian identity and existence, and they're not going away. So I think that that's where the, the function is important of this, whereas those that are complicit in the oppression need to be liberated from their own oppression, you know, and liberated from what they're participating in. Most Americans that I talk to that have absolutely no idea about what's going on, when they come to hear just a few stories of the plight of the Palestinian people and the types of brutality 
that we have encountered wake up to this and say, oh my God, this is what my tax dollars go to? This is what I'm a part of, right? So we have to liberate people across the board uh, from being oppressors or from being oppressed.